Hello and welcome to my bungalow of blood. Join me and my roommates, Dr. Ed, Nurse Natasha, Gary Gray, and Hans the Butler as we talk about all things horror. Well, now that the dust is cleared and everyone else has reviewed and complained about and maybe even praised Halloween Ends, I thought it would be a good time to sit down and have a little chat about Halloween Ends, especially since it's the end of the Halloween season. You're full of shit. The only reason this review is coming out so late is you put off watching the movie. I went to opening night. I walked five miles by myself. You guys didn't show up. To be honest, I wasn't in a huge rush to go see Halloween Ends. I had no money! I had to walk home in the rain! After the disappointment of Halloween Kills and the first trailers for Halloween Ends, it looked like a Steven Seagal movie! I wasn't interested in seeing another movie where Michael Myers and Laurie Strode face off for what appeared to be, judging by the trailer, for the whole damn movie. Two senior citizens beating each other up sounds more like a comedy than a horror to me. Geriatric fights. I'd watch that. But of course I went to go see it because it's a Halloween movie and I'm a horror fan. He even paid for my ticket. The cheap prick will probably take it out of your salary next paycheck. What paycheck? So to cut to the chase, I'm going to flat out say that I actually kind of dug Halloween ends. What? Jesus, what? I had very mixed feelings about it. I liked it too. I was confused. As soon as the opening credits started, I noticed the font wasn't orange, but instead it was the same blue colored font we saw in Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. As soon as I saw that, I knew they were going to swerve us and we weren't going to get the movie that we were expecting. That's an understatement. I'm a huge fan of Halloween 3, and even though I knew this would have no connection to Season of the Witch, when I saw that blue font, a switch flipped in my brain and suddenly I was mentally prepared to watch a completely different movie. Something that's totally out of the blue. I don't like Halloween 3 because it doesn't have Michael Myers. Well that's because you're a simpleton, Hans. And this doesn't even have Michael Myers either. Sure it does, Ed. Just not as much as we were all expecting. You didn't even finish the movie, Ed. You passed out drunk half hour in. And that's what the criticism about this movie really all boils down to, is expectations. I expected a two hour long fight scene. So why did I like Halloween Ends? To put it very simply, it was a breath of fresh air. I was not looking forward to seeing the movie that I thought they were going to give us. Let's face it, Michael Myers stalking Laurie Strode is getting very long in the tooth. I've always liked John Carpenter's idea of turning Halloween into an anthology series where every movie is a different set of characters and different story that still revolves around Halloween. But then we wouldn't have Halloween 4 and we all know how much you love that one. I found this movie had the spirit of John Carpenter's anthology idea while still weaving the Michael Myers and Laurie Strode story into it, making it a neat mix of something different yet familiar. It was not cliche in the least. Right from the opening scene, we're introduced to a male babysitter, Corey, and I thought, okay, we're breaking the mold here. A male babysitter. And they're watching John Carpenter's The Thing on the Telly. Which is not only a great nod to the original film where the kids are watching the original thing on the TV, but also a nod to John Carpenter, the director of the original film. Again, it's something familiar because they're watching the same movie, but it's new because they're watching the remake. The best remake of all time. The plot of this movie follows this new character, Corey, who's babysitting a boy in 2019. The boy plays a prank on Corey, and it goes horribly wrong. Corey ends up accidentally pushing the boy over the banister of the top floor. The boy falls to his death. I thought this was a fantastic scene. Lots of suspense and misdirection. The tension was great, and it kept me wondering, what's going to happen next? Three years later, after a trial that has torn both families apart, Corey's working for his dad in a junkyard, and he's become an outcast in Haddonfield. All the town's people still look at him as being a child killer, even though it was an accident. That little shit deserved it. The child did not deserve to die. Laurie Strode, on the other hand, has gotten her life back on track. She's no longer living in fear of Michael Myers, and she's exercising her demons by writing a memoir. Some of the town's folk blame the return of Michael Myers in 2018 on Laurie Strode. How is it her fault? Laurie sees a bunch of kids giving Corey a hard time, and they have a little bonding moment as they slash the tires to their car. This shows that Laurie is still a badass. I felt sorry for Corey. It rhymes, just like Lori and Cory. I feel sorry for Lori and Cory. Lori then introduces Cory to her granddaughter, Allison, and they hit it off right away. 
Love at first sight. Even though it's really forced, I do like the character arcs in this movie. We see how the events from the previous movie has changed all the characters. Lori has gotten her life back together. She's more like the character we met in 1978, which is nice to see her back on track and not just a basket case recluse. Allison, on the other hand, has almost lost her confidence after losing her mother. Corey is starting to spiral into madness as the grief from the accident eats him up inside. At the same time, he's falling in love with Allison and he's being tormented by all the townspeople, so he's really being pulled in different directions from the inside and out. This is where I fell asleep. So where the fuck is Michael Myers? Well, he's just been hanging out in a sewer for three years. I'm only guessing he was weakened by the beating that he took in 2018. So let me get this straight. After the beating, he got all of his strength back, killed half the townsfolk before retiring in a sewer? He's 65 years old. You don't bounce back the way you did in your 20s. Corey is beaten up and thrown over a bridge where he encounters the weakened Myers. Myers attempts to kill Corey, but he's either too weak to do it or he sees something of himself in Corey and lets him go. Not really sure which one it is. They really could have done a better job explaining all this. I've heard some theories that there's like a power transference between Michael and Corey. I don't think that's what they were trying to put forward. I don't think they're going for a supernatural take here. Fascinated by Myers, Corey goes back to the sewer, accidentally leading Allison's ex-boyfriend to be slaughtered by Myers. Corey helps Myers kill this guy, and Myers is reinvigorated by the kill. Corey then takes it upon himself to don a scarecrow mask and start killing off all the people that's done harm to him and Allison with the help of Michael fucking Myers. Holy fuck. I'm not sure if I'm glad I slept through that or if I missed out on something totally bonkers. Yes, it's totally bonkers, and that's why I like it. I didn't like Halloween Kills. I kind of liked Halloween 2018, and this being so different from those two movies, it really got me on board. It was a neat standalone film, but did not seem like part three of a trilogy. Not at all. In fact, none of these three movies fit together whatsoever. They all have a completely different tone, and the story doesn't flow through them logically at all. They're all standalone movies, just like John Carpenter's original idea for an anthology series. So I'm confused if they actually set out to make three completely different movies and forgot to clue us in or if they thought this would actually work as a trilogy. It's the second worst trilogy of all time! Oh yeah, Hans, then what's the worst? Star Wars episodes one through three. Can't disagree. So now Cory is on his way to kill Lori because she has seen evil in his eyes and wants to stand between him and Allison. And Myers isn't far behind because get this, Cory beat up Michael Myers and stole his mask. What? Or did Michael let Cory steal his mask? I don't know what's worse, Myers giving up his mask or Corey beating up a senior citizen. Yeah, I know everyone's saying it's silly that Corey beat up Michael Myers and stole his mask, but I try to look at it this way. Michael Myers is like 65 years old. He's been living in a sewer, eating who knows what, no vegetables. He probably has scurvy, no muscle mass. His muscles will be totally useless. Of course this kid's gonna beat him up. They really could have done a better job explaining all this. So is this story a good way to end the Michael Myers Laurie Strode saga? Not in the least. Ah, we've seen that storyline like four fucking times. And frankly, I'm sick of it. So when they threw Michael Myers into a trash compactor at the end of the movie, I couldn't be happier. You just spoiled the ending, silly! It's called Halloween Ends. There's nothing to spoil! Just because I found this movie a breath of fresh air and kind of enjoyable, it doesn't actually mean it's a good movie. I can't tell what's more confusing, the movie or your review. Don't get me wrong, this movie is super flawed. It doesn't work as part of a trilogy, let alone the ending of a trilogy. There's not enough explanation to this connection between Michael and Corey. And to quote a great man, There's some corny dialogue that make the Pope weep. And it missed the opportunity at being a passing of the torch story. Michael Myers can't go on forever. He is supposed to be human after all. I've always liked the idea of a passing of the torch storyline when a slasher series starts to get stale. They had the opportunity multiple times to do it with Friday the 13th. They kind of did it with Jason Goes to Hell. And they could have even gone that route with Halloween after part four with Jamie Lloyd. 
So not keeping Cory alive in Halloween Ends, I think was a huge missed opportunity. You keep spoiling everything for Ed! Go on, spoil it all you want. I'll never finish watching this shit. Killing off Cory made the whole movie kind of pointless and the storyline totally useless. Totally useless. But the one thing that pissed me off the most, more than anything else in this movie, is the end credits. They didn't play the Halloween theme at the end. They played... Don't Fear the Reaper by the Blue Oyster Cult. I like that song. Now that is blasphemy. They didn't end the final movie with the Halloween theme. Excuse me while I rip my balls out through my asshole. So did I love Halloween Ends? No, of course not. Did I like it? I think I did. I, I think the best phrase to use is I dug Halloween Ends, if that makes any sense. You stopped making sense a long time ago. The movie kept me invested in the outcome of the characters in this storyline. It had some great kills. Like, come on, the tongue on the turntable? I was howling. Same thing with the truck through the chain link fence kill. I thought that was great. I think the kills in this movie are better than the kills in Halloween Kills. Good kills. Maybe I'll go back and finish watching it. The music by John Carpenter and his son and their collaborator is fantastic. It stayed serious throughout the whole movie. We didn't have these comedy duos like we did in Halloween Kills with Big John and Little John, turning it into an SNL sketch, or I guess more fittingly, a Mad TV sketch. Or that fucking little kid from the 2018 movie. I like the commentary that it had on the root of evil, and evil comes in different shapes and forms. Sometimes evil is born like Michael Myers. Sometimes evil is curated over time by a set of events and circumstances happening to the wrong person, like we see with Corey. Did anyone else see the connection between Corey and Arnie Cunningham from Christine? Arnie Cunningham. Both lose their glasses, they have the same last name, and go through the same transformation throughout the movie. It tries to deal with that age-old question, is evil born or is it created by man over time? And it was really nice to see Laurie Strode survive the movie. There was a lot of speculation that both her and Michael would kill each other off at the end. This solidifies Laurie Strode as being the ultimate final girl, or I guess in this case, final old woman. Yes, this movie failed on many levels, but it was so far out of left field, and I couldn't help but enjoy watch the train run off the tracks. It's like when you find someone kind of ugly, but cute at the same time, then suddenly you have this weird crush on them. That's exactly how I feel about this movie, and if you hate it, I totally understand. Personally, I didn't want a trilogy of movies with Michael Myers fighting Laurie Strode again. I find it's boring, it's been done before. I wouldn't mind seeing Michael and Laurie fight when they're 80 years old. I found that this, as a standalone anthology-style Halloween movie, was kind of neat. Was it the best way to end the story? Not in the least. Either way, cheers to the final movie featuring Michael Myers and Laurie Strode together. It may not have been what we were expecting, but thank God it's finally over with. We could all now move on with our lives and hopefully enjoy something new and exciting. And who knows, maybe in another 20, 30 years, this movie might find some new love and occult following the same way the first Halloween 3 season of The Witch did. And what do you think is next for the Halloween franchise? Is it dead? Is it going to be rebooted? Is Michael going to come back to life through the Garburator somehow? Let me know. I've always wondered the best way to get rid of a slasher to make sure he never comes back. Trash Compactor.